This morning's scripture comes from the book of Ephesians. Chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in an inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now, turn to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us to be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Let's pause for a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, in the midst of your people, I pray for your words to be heard. That whatever comes from my mouth might be your words and not mine. And the blessing that descends on all of us gathered here this day might come from you. And that we might hear and know what it is that we need to gather this day so that we too might be a blessing to others. And it is in your name that I pray. Amen. Paul has just described the church calling in cosmic terms. The unity of Gentile and Jew in the church is intended by God to make known the manifold wisdom of God to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Jesus Christ. That's why Paul begins us with, for this reason, I kneel. The only way the church can reach the heights God has called us to is to kneel in prayer. Now, I know, I know, and as I look around the room, without too much exception, your kneeling days are over. I understand that. I have reached that point where I, my kneeling days aren't over, but my getting up days have kind of diminished. So I understand that when we read this scripture and Paul says that we need to kneel in prayer, for us, that is just a figure of speech. But for us also, prayer is vitally important. We need to understand that in order for us to accomplish the will of God, God has to lead us. Not just us participate, but he has to lead us in the way we need to go. Prayer, well, his picture of God as he prays and the requests he makes are breathtaking. I, I, I want to I ask you something. Have you ever stood outside, for us, it would be on the deck out behind the house. Have you ever stood outside and looked at the moon? And obviously, if the moon is shining and it's big and bright, for me, as it comes over the top of that hill back here, there are days that have been just the last week or so where it is big and extremely bright. In fact, it's so bright, it's difficult to see the stars around. You have to look over that way where the city lights tend to blend them or take them out of the picture. But as you stand and look at the stars, have you ever wondered at the immensity of God? Have you ever stopped to wonder how in the world can one being know the very intimacy of my soul and my body, by the way, and know the vastness of the universe because he made it? We still have not reached the farthest distances of the farthest galaxies. We have no idea how many stars are out there. Oh yeah, there are people that have guesstimated how many are out there, how many are planets and how many are stars and how many there are to begin with. But remember, God created them all. 
God created them all, and at the same time, he knows every cell of your body. Wow. And when you pray at night or you pray any time during the day, the being that created all of this hears your prayers and answers them. He has the ability to detail everything that we need even before we say it. His love and his compassion for us is so immense that he knows what we are going to say before we ever say it, but welcomes us to talk to him because he wants to be in fellowship with us all the time, nonstop. As a human being, I can't even imagine being in a crowd of 100,000 people and trying to pick out what one person's saying and he has the whole world that he listens to. Many can't understand God as father. What was your childhood like? Did you know your father? What kind of a father was he? What was the model for you as a father? For me, I had a pretty rough childhood. My mom and dad got divorced when I was between five and six years old, and I went to live with my grandparents, where my grandfather's favorite disciplining implement was a 3 h rubber hose. I know what it's like, not necessarily to be abused, but to be corrected in a very difficult way. And so I started out my childhood understanding that this is love. When I really didn't know God at all. Paul is trying to tell us that we need to understand God as Father, without exception. And to model, not for our Father as God, but as God as our Father. There are many lives and many people, probably within our seeing distance who had difficult childhoods and understand or understood their father as a very strict disciplinarian rather than a loving human being. Not only is God willing to answer our prayers, but in a way way beyond our imagination. In fact, Paul's words are inspiring. The riches of his glory, the riches of his glory, God is willing to help us not just out of his glorious treasure of resources, but out of the riches of his own inexhaustible self. Think about this for just a moment. God created everything there is. Everything God created. And what man built, he was given those talents and those materials by God. The universe was created by a being that we can't even begin to understand, period. Other than we know his love. How? Well, as we'll sing about at the end of this service, because the Bible told me so. But I hope that's not the only way that you know his love. I hope you've experienced it. I hope you've lived with it. God himself is limitless. What's more, Paul prays that God will answer not only out of his glory, but according to that glory, and in proportion to, and in the full measure of his glory. When I put all of this in human sight, I can't even begin to imagine the power of God and what he can do. The content of Paul's prayer is structured around three different clauses. One is that he may strengthen you with power. Two is that you may have the power to grasp, grab a hold of, and keep, and never let go. And that you may be filled. I want to explain a couple of them. First, he asks for power, but not power to accomplish some Herculean earthly task like being a good father or running a large corporation or bringing world peace, his prayer is theologically in the extreme because we can't accomplish those earthly tasks unless we first ask for it to be granted. We have to ask 
for that power. We have to ask for it to be done. He prays the power that will strengthen his faith so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I need to pause here for just a moment and admit to something. My faith is weakened. My faith in the last couple of months has become less than it should be. My mornings, actually when I roll out of bed, my first thought is for this church, this church. I am very, very concerned about the future of the Watsburg United Methodist Church. And it has caused me to really be concerned. Uh, it is to the point where, uh, where I have anxious moments during the day because I am really concerned about the future of you folks in this building. I don't know what God has in mind. And because of that, because of my earthly weakness, I tend to stray away from the understanding that God's got this. My family has tried to support me, tried to build me up, tried to make me understand that if I had true faith in God, that I wouldn't worry about it because he is in control. He is in charge. That's where my faith is at, at this moment. But I have had blind trust in God in the past and I need to build it up again. I need to really understand that, that this is God's house and he alone has got this in his hand. This power comes from the Holy Spirit who lives in your inner being. The spirit given power is absolutely essential given the daily challenges of our faith. Everything in our world influences against a truly Christ-centered faith, so it's nearly impossible and as Paul says, live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Without faith, we won't be aware of Christ's presence. We won't rely on him. We won't enjoy fellowship with him, and we won't center our lives in him. If Christ doesn't live in our hearts through faith, the rest of Paul's prayer and complete Christian life are absolutely impossible. If we do not trust fully in the will of God, everything else will fall apart. I remember in high school, I had a very difficult time with Spanish. I am horrible with foreign languages. And because I was failing Spanish, all the rest of my classes were dropping grades too. I could not keep up all the rest of my grades because of one class. As soon as I dropped that one class, all of my grades came back up. I got rid of that one thing that was constantly bothering me and became faithful to the rest. Paul also said that you may have power to grasp, that you may have power to grasp and to know the love of Christ. Being rooted and established in love tells us an important thing about understanding the love of Christ. Unless we have love and are loved, we cannot understand God's love. But we have love and are loved because God first loved us. Think about that for a minute. Jesus was fully man and fully God. Jesus' earthly father had nothing to do with his creation. His earthly father adopted him and raised him with love and compassion. You and I were created by a father and mother, earthly father and mother. However, were it not for the influence of God and the ability to be able to procreate, we would not be here today. God gave us the power to create. God gave us everything we have and everything we, everything. To produce children is a gift from God. And if you don't believe that, ask those that were not able to have children. God had to be involved in the creation of children. 
One writer says this circle of love is the most blessed chain reaction in the universe. The practical impact of this theological mystery is that those who love is shallow and shaky will not be able to understand the love of Christ. If God's gift of love has been distorted or damaged by the lack of love in our upbringing, it's really hard for us to ever understand the love of God, except that the power of God can overcome our upbringing. He says that you may have the power to grasp. Paul's not talking about the love of God in general, but about the love of Christ. And this is not our love for, for Christ, but his love for us. The day that you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, the day that you recognized him for what he truly is, you began to understand the love of God. You began to understand what love truly is. That's why he wants us to understand. That's what we need to understand if we're ever going to live by faith in the Son of God. The main reason we don't trust him and obey him always is that we don't really grasp how much he loves us. We say we believe. In fact, we sing, Jesus loves me, this I know, but we don't really know it. Not deeply and not always. We don't grasp, in Paul's words, how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Paul's multiplying words to give us a sense of the magnitude of Christ's love. Paul had to add all the adjectives he could possibly think of for us to understand that we don't understand. To help us to draw closer to Christ has to be something that we develop over time. There was a discussion that I had this week about how faithful are those who had to learn uh, faith by experience. Do you learn the love of God by experience or do you blindly know it because you read it in the Bible somewhere? For me, there's many opportunities for me to experience it. Oh, I read it in the Bible and I can understand what the Bible says and I believe what the Bible says but until I experience it, until I know it, it's very difficult to live by it. It's as though Paul's saying, I want you to know the love of Christ. Of course, you can't know that love completely because it surpasses anything you could possibly know. The Greek meaning that this is a, in the Greek word, it's a meaning that this is a love that is way over your head. You can't wrap it around your head it's literally incomprehensible. That doesn't mean it's nonsense or non-existent. It means that you know, you can know it by experience in ways that you can't fully understand or express. Paul says, I want you to have the full experience of Christ's love. The fullness of God. Kathy and I watched the Olympics last night Watched him most of the day, actually. Saw all those people winning and losing. Some of them achieving, achieving a lifelong dream. And there were tears of joy and there were tears of sadness. There were cheers and uh, praises and so many things going on. And, and I could just uh, feel, I could feel it in my heart, how some of those were, were emotionally shaken. Grasping, fullness, I'm filled with a love, filled with a compassion to the point of tears. Even though I'm not fully involved, even though I'm not anywhere involved, I can feel the, the pride and the, the compassion that those people have for their country and what they're doing, not only for their country, but for themselves. That's what it says when we need to experience the fullness of God. Have you ever eaten a full meal where you get up from the table and you just feel like you just can't go anywhere? Fullness. Have you ever had love for someone where, where you just had to grab on to them and, and hug them and can't walk away from them? Fullness. That's how we're to feel about God. This is the highest blessing we could ever pray for. It's the goal of all human life. It's what we were made for. 
Though all religions aim for this, it is absolutely impossible for sinful human beings to get it except by the grace of God. That's what Paul prays here, by the grace of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. And for all of us that inhabit or are inhabited by the Holy Spirit, we have the capability to know and to love and to grasp. Paul says, now to him who is able to do, not just more, but immeasurably more, than, not only than, what we ask for, imagine there is literally no limit to what God can do in response to your prayers. In fact, think about it for just a moment. He who created everything there is, never, never runs out of resources. He who created the very being of love never, never runs out of grace, forgiveness, compassion. It is always there. In fact, the power of God that can do anything is already at work in us. And when you pray, you're not talking to God who is simply high and lifted up and able to do anything. He's already within you and at work. I read something on the internet this morning that touched me. Something that I kind of think says it all. Nelson Mandela, and I hope all of you know who he is, he was a prisoner in South Africa for many years because the British thought he was a rebel. Well, he kind of was. But when he became president of that country, he wrote many influential things and changed that country to a Christian country, uh, to one who accepted all and loved all. But he wrote this, if they, can be, if they can be taught to hate, they can be taught to love. Love everyone, including yourself. Humanity is my, humanity is my race and love knows no boundaries. Is there a limit to your love? Is there a point when you say, I no longer love you, I reject you, I'll walk away, I give up, can't do it anymore. For God, there is no end. There's no end, there is no beginning. God created you for a purpose. And that is so that he can love you and so that you can love one another. When you leave this place, I hope you go with God. I know you go with God because he is inside of you through the power of the Holy Spirit you are capable of more than you even know and this place is truly blessed because you know God in this house as well as your own let's pray Heavenly Father we do not know your capacity for love we do not know your limits. We believe that there are none. And so as we go through life on a moment by moment basis, give us the ability to remember your limitless love, your endless power, the things that we are able to do, not because of who we are, but because of who you are. And the love and the life that we are able to share with others so that they too, might be filled and grab a hold of the love that is available through you. And it is in your name that we pray.